Hi, everybody. Hello. Welcome to the big lesson. I'm ready to learn. I can believe to learn. Can you believe to learn? I'm getting a YouTube thing telling me that my audio stream's current bit rate is zero. That doesn't seem right. <laughs> is, that, uh -oh. is that right? Let me know if you can hear me. If the bit rate is zero, you probably won't be able to hear me. Yeah, that's not a good bit rate. Is it, People is are it, saying hi. Does it work? Is the bit rate? No, I can hear you. Is the bit right? <laughs> is the bit is, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you TFW, can hear me. TFW, the bit right. The bit rate is bit right. It's it's just like suggestion. The audio stream's current bit rate zero is lower than the recommended bit rate. It's like yeah, that would be. <laughs> That, you're telling me the recommended bit rate is higher than zero. What are we? What are we, bit bitillionaires? Yeah, I don't, no. I don't have bits to spare. It cost enough bits just doing the video. Um, okay, I am going to zoom in the thing now. You're going to take a peek behind the curtain here. I'm going to zoom in the thing a little bit. Zoom it in. So that I get rid of this green, this green border. Yeah. This is the wrong one that I'm moving. Let's move the right one. Here we go. Here we go. Now I need to take this and move it down. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's going to be pretty good stuff right there. Oh, yeah. I'm watching it on the delay in the stream. Let's get it. It's happening. It's all happening. It's all happening. No more They're... green border. Yeah. No, uh, none of that. <laughs> How's everybody doing today? It's it's Friday. It's time to learn a thing or two. Um, yeah. Gonna... I like these draw classes a lot because I learn. I I also learn. You also I learn. Get to, I get to hang out, and I didn't even have to pay to be here. I'm, I'm getting paid. You're getting paid to be here. I have to pay, Nathan, a dollar per minute <laughs> out of my own pocket. Yeah. That's my rate. And I have to do it on the minute through That's Venmo. my extra, yeah, that's my hanging out on stream rate. If I'm even It's a, a friend rate. It I'm would be higher if we weren't friends. Late. If I'm even slightly late on the payment, Nathan leaves the call. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm checking constantly. Uh, we're just kind of shooting the shoot here for a second, giving people a chance to get in the stream. This is this is some top of the stream banter. Yeah, some top of the stream banter. Nathan, I love anything, it. Anything you want to talk about? You want to got some? You want to do like your monologue at the beginning of the show? Yeah. Oh man, what's what's going on? Um, you you hear about this? Uh, so um, the uh, uh, there's no there's no there's nothing topical I can say that will be funny. Of uh, vote. <laughs> Make a plan to vote. <laughs> oh wait, I've got to be like the the dude in your band who just like laughs at everything you say. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you let. Oh, Jacob loves that. Um, <laughs> you're the you're the guy from uh, uh, Feel Good Inc. I'm the guy. <laughs> yeah, the got leader a, of your band is the guy. We got from the Feel laughing the laughing man from Feel Good Inc. <laughs> um, yeah, it's. We're in that liminal space where if you're watching live, you still have time to vote. But if you're watching the VOD, you know you know what happened. You know what happened, and, and hopefully it was good. Hopefully, hopefully it was good. All the voting paid off. If not, we we sure will look the fools. Yeah, I don't want to look. I don't want to look the fools. So 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 don't. So that's extra reason to vote. Yeah, most definitely. Um, Jamie, oh, thank you very much for posting a link in the Discord. I was going there to do that, and then I saw you typing, and I was like, I don't have to do it. Because Jamie, I know that's what Jamie's doing. And sure enough, that's what they were doing. Yeah. Good. That's called trust. That's called trust, sweaty. That's called trust, sweaty. <laughs> well, we got 18 people in right now, which is still, mm. it seems low for are usual for this, but I'm probably just going to go. Well, the nice thing is we go for two hours, so people have time. Yeah, but if people miss the first five minutes of things I have to say, 
they're going to be lost. They're going to be lost. It's going to be impossible to follow what's going on for the rest of the stream. It's pretty Anna dense. Kay, Anna K, Anna K, thank you for voting and getting other people to vote. That rules. Anna Hell K, yeah. that's you're you're living the the living the stuff over there. You're doing the stuff. You're cooking the soup. I appreciate that. I did not realize that Anna Kendrick was a Drawfee fan. Anna but... Kendrick is a huge Drawfee fan and loves to get her friends to vote. <laughs> Two facts I know about Anna Kendrick. <laughs> uh, should we start talking about practicing? Yeah. Nathan, do you want to hear about how to practice effectively? Hey, how come uh, doctors and lawyers call what they do practice? Yeah, it seems like they should be done practicing and on to executing on their mm. on their knowledge, right? It's mm. like if you're gonna be we're getting in my mouth, Mister Dentist, you better not be practicing. You yeah, better be, this th better be. This is you, the big show. You should have. This is the big night. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is, is your Carnegie time. Hall. You're yeah. not working on a fake skeleton mouth anymore. I don't know how dentists learn how to do what they do. <laughs> Shout outs to dentists. Shout outs to dentists. Thanks for making my mouth bleed every couple months. Uh, let's you. talk about art practice, though. How yes. about that? Because yes. that's what I came here to talk about. I made a whole, I did a whole Google Doc over here of things I want to talk about. A, a, a talk doc. Yeah. I feel like a lot of the the big sort of questions that that me and you and all online artists get from people is like you know a how do i find the motivation to sit down and like draw and practice mm -hmm. and b you know like once i sit down like how do i know what to draw what am i supposed to do there's a and every time i see questions like this i panic because i don't know the answer exactly so and i'm hoping i'm hoping you can teach me as well as the chat a lot well. of people don't know the answer and i think it's because a lot of people are thinking about practice in the wrong way i think they got it they got it mixed up in their head so this is a, th a thinking lesson it's a thinking lesson at the start i'm, I'm setting my parameters i love here. that um i'm ready to that's that was always my favorite in college when when a teacher would open up with with a, a change to how i even thought about what i was learning before yeah. i even learned anything i'm about to rewire your whole brain let's and, do it and then we'll go from there yes hype for this uh so so this lesson is is aiming to help people who have a hard time sitting down to draw and also people who maybe draw a lot but aren't seeing the level of improvement that they want to see in sure. their art which i think are two separate issues but stem from the same problem uh and that problem in large part is that people conflate practice with execution like they they think that practice and drawing a completed piece are the same thing Mm -hmm. Like if I sit down and like, I'm going to draw a turtle doing a dance on top of a circus ball, that'd be great. That sounds like a really fun drawing. But when I sit down to do that, what I'm doing is accessing the things I already know how to do and then using those things to complete a piece. I'm not actually taking in any new information that I didn't mm. already have in there. I'm just using what I already had. Gotcha. So drawing it all you know, is beneficial because it will train your muscle memory so you can be more confident with your lines and stuff like that and your shapes. Things will improve just from drawing a lot. But if you approach practice as a separate thing from drawing, I think you can get a lot better results. And a way I like to think about it is, and I'm going to actually do a little text, do a little text here. Let's do some text here. Oh my gosh. I didn't make slides or anything, so I'm just gonna do some text here. We're, do, we're doing it on the fly. Yeah, we're doing this on the fly. Let's get, you know, let's make it. How big you think this text is? Oh, it's pretty big. Oh, lorem ipsum dolor sit amet. A lot of people lorem ipsum <laughs> dolor sit amet, and that's an issue. Um, can I edit this text or, or not? Nah? <laughs> that's just there now. <laughs> hey. hey. Maybe maybe you should have practiced this lesson. <laughs> hey Photoshop, can I um what is going on here? I can't Did I spill did I spill jam all over your uh your your stamps, your letter stamps again? 
I don't know what is happening. Hold on. Just just hand letter it. Just write it. What is <laughs> Okay, here we go. This is good enough. <laughs> it's not well, number giving one, me like the, the always make sure you go to the bathroom before you sit down to practice. I just practice can't I can't see my um my little where my text marker is, nor can I see if I have any text highlighted. So that's a cool mm -hmm. trick Photoshop's doing on me right now. Do you have a uh, cap lock on? Can you, can you hit control H? Control H? I hit control H. That okay. didn't do anything. Hit control H again. Okay. That wasn't the problem. That wasn't the problem, no. I'm sorry. I tried to solve it. Uh, I'm gonna it does I don't need to, you know, type like a ton of stuff for this anyway, so it's fine. Laura Mipsum is really the takeaway here. Yeah. Practice equals input. Drawing equals output. Yes. This is a thing that I think a lot of people think about wrong. And I think when you think of it in these terms, when you're practicing, what you want to be doing is putting new information into your brain. So you need to be looking outwards at things that you don't know how to do that you can put inside your brain. And you want to try to get as much new information into your brain as possible when you're practicing. Right. Uh, which means you're not making art when you're practicing. You're not sitting down to make a piece you're gonna show to someone. You're not making anything for anyone other than your own brain to gain more information that it can start analyzing. Practice so, is for you. Practice is for you. It's for taking in outside information. And then when you're actually drawing, you're taking all that information you've got and putting it out onto the page to, to make an actual piece. Uh, and it's, it's two completely different like thought processes that go into these two things. Um, I think the reason it helps to think of practice as input and as not really a like creative performance is because that means that practice doesn't matter in the sense that you're not, you're not showing it off. It's not art. So you don't have to apply the same value judgments to it that you would to art that you make. You don't need to put the pressure on it. Exactly. You don't need to make any value judgments. There's not like, oh, I sure practiced that good or bad. Yeah. It's just I practiced something you that I didn't it. know how to do. And now I know how to do it a little bit better, probably. Practice in and of itself is is good to do. Yeah. So when you're practicing, you can separate sort of the emotional aspect from it a bit better and say like, this is just this is just work. This is taking information, putting it in my head, and it doesn't matter what comes out onto the page because it's not for anyone or anything. It's just for me. Ungraded homework. Exactly. Yeah. It's it's for your own benefit. It's um, like when when teachers assigned like fifteen minutes of reading, you just had to get your parents to sign a thing that said you did it. Yeah. But but he, there was no test. There's no test. So it doesn't matter how good you did the reading. Yeah. Except you just did it. In this case, you you are your own teacher and your own parents. Right. And you're doing it for your own dang self. Yeah. Um, but I think the aspect of pressure, the pressure of looking at a blank page and being like, what am I going to draw? Stops a lot of people from working instead of thinking about it as what am I going to work on today? Like, what am I going to set out to improve today? And if you know what that. types of things you need to improve, then you always have something to draw. So the way this lesson is going to go is I'm just going to go through a bunch of different things, a bunch of different types of things you could work on and cool. show you like exactly what you could sit down and do to improve those things. I love that. Uh, so if you're watching this, you don't have to sit down and wonder. You can be like, oh, well, I can just do one of these six things and it will improve some aspect of my of my art. Heck yeah. Uh, and then going into this, another important note is that when you're practicing, one of the most important aspects of practice, I think, is speed. Uh, you want to be going fast and iterating on what you're doing very quickly. So you don't want to get bogged down in any one drawing for more than like two to three minutes maximum. Um, you want to be doing like using these big ideas, practicing these big ideas and doing it as many times as you can in like a time span. It's kind of the difference that. between like if you spend three hours drawing one pose 
versus if you spent three hours drawing 50 poses, the person who drew 50 poses is going to have a better general knowledge of how to pose someone than the person who yeah. spent all that time on one pose. You don't um, want to be precious. You don't want to be precious practice. because this is not drawing. You can right. be precious when you're drawing because that's the whole point. You want to make it exactly what you want it to be. When you're practicing, you're not drawing. Do not be precious. If you have a hard time going fast, I highly recommend using timers. Um, I do this all the time uh, where I'll just set like a looping all the timer. timer. I do it all the timer <laughs> where I set a looping timer for whatever kind of span I want to work with. And then as soon as it goes off, you just stop what you're doing and move on to the next thing. Hell yeah. Uh, so now we'll get into... Well, actually, let me look at the chat real quick and see if anyone has anything I feel like I need to respond to. Seems We're good up right to 26 now. 26 people watching. It's mostly uh, mostly voting. Yeah. So voting is great. Keep doing that. Yeah. Um, I guess I could ask, does anyone have any questions about this beginning stuff before I move on with things? I know there's a bit of a delay. Oh, so. Mad Hat Tricks di did a did a joke that was also a compliment of me. Oh, it's nice to compliment you, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mad Hat Trick. We love that. We love I it love when Nathan that. gets compliments. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not so far. All right. I'm only teaching this for Joshua. So whatever Joshua answers is what I will take as gospel. <laughs> and I will move yeah. on. I think I think everything you've said has been has made sense and it's it's nice. I think a lot of it is stuff that like people probably know deep down but it's nice to hear stated explicitly and clearly the way that you have. Definitely. And I the reason I think it's helpful too is that is that it helps me when I hear it even though I know it. Yeah. <laughs> like sometimes I'll sure. just go watch like YouTube videos. People are talking about like practicing techniques and they'll, they'll say the same things I've already heard a million times. But every time I hear it, I'm like, yeah, that is right. It's almost it's the it's that repetition thing. It's like what practicing is. Exactly. Repetition legitimizes. Repetition legitimizes. Uh, so now I'd like to talk about kind of the the fundamental part of the practice method that that I do that I think sort of gets you the best results. And I really do wish this text tool would work. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be the runner. That's going to be like the fun, the fun comedy bit. It's like it's nice when a teacher experiences technical difficulties. It, ta it just sort of makes the class feel a little bit more relaxed. Yeah. So I you you've given you've given our our class a, a gift by by doing this, Jacob. Good. I'm glad I could give a gift. Uh thankfully it all fit within this invisible box that I can't see. Um so these are sort of the two core tenets that I think you should be focusing on when you're practicing. Um you learn how to do new things by referencing outside images, whether it's like photographs or life drawing or other people's art. You need to take in outside information to learn something new. You can't just like generate it from the ether. Um, I know there's like a lot of sort of like beginner artists that get stuck in this idea that like referencing is bad or something, or you shouldn't draw with reference. I don't know. A lot of people have weird hangups about it. Uh, you literally can't learn or get any better if you're not referencing outside sources. That's just how you learn new information. But Drawing from reference is not enough. You also need to reinforce that knowledge by drawing from your imagination. So when you're practicing, a good thing to do is find some reference and then try to sort of replicate what the reference does, then put it all away and then try to do a similar thing from your imagination immediately thereafter. Um, if you do those two things, you can kind of grow both parts of your brain. You can expand your visual library and also expand your brain's ability to draw on that information when you don't have reference. To draw on that information. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> there's a lot of things I noticed that are like problems in other people's art that I think is a, it comes down to not doing one of these two things. Mm -hmm. um, I've known a lot of people who can only draw from reference. They're like, I can replicate something exactly 
that I'm looking at. But as soon as the reference is gone, it's like, I can't draw at all. Like I've known a ton of people who run into that issue and it's mm -hmm. because they're not doing this second thing. They're drawing right. from reference, but then not ever trying to access that information separate from the reference. Uh, then there's other people who maybe they draw all the time from imagination, but they're never using any reference to put new information into their head. So their right. art kind of stagnates because it's drawing on the same pool of information that you've been working with for, for years. You're not putting any new information in. I have fallen into that category before. Yeah. It's I mean, always, it's always just like a, a shock to the system whenever, you know, you go for a long period without doing any sort of life drawing and then you try and do it again and think like, I know how to draw. And then it's like, oh, this is, <laughs> this is, um, this is a different, whole set of muscles being worked out yeah totally it's like a completely different thing that needs to be practiced but contributes to your overall skill set yeah um so i think if you manage to practice by doing both of these things in conjunction with each other you will notice really rapid improvement in your art um the times that i felt like i was improving the fastest was when i was doing this regularly um, and not even for very long. Like I would sit down for like 30 minutes to an hour, a few times a week and try to do this, applying it to something. And, um, I noticed like anytime on Drawfee when like the comments have said, wow, uh, it looks like Jacob improved a lot in this one. Uh, that's because that was a time when I had been doing this <laughs> regularly. Deliberately trying to improve. Yeah. Yeah. But I yeah. think that doing these two steps makes you improve a lot faster than doing just any one thing. Yeah. Uh, so now we will get into the actual drawing portion of the lesson where I'm going to go over just like a, some different things you can practice on uh, doing by doing this stuff. And we will start with gesture, which I think is one of the most important things for any artist is yes. gesture drawing. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you already know this. Yes, sir, gesture. Yes, sir, gesture. Um, so what? Imagination. Yeah, get out of here, text. We're done. This is my friend, Imaginatio. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to pull up one of the gesture websites that I that I commonly Look at that. use. Look at that clean desktop you got. No files there. Nothing over there. Hmm. Uh, so I should do... I should do that. Step one: clear your workspace. <laughs> if you clear organize, your workspace, organize your stuff. All right, let's pull this over here. This is uh, the Line of Action website. They have a thirty-second figure drawing thing. I usually like to put it right next to my my workspace. You can see this, right, Nathan? Yeah. Okay. Cool. And we're going to make sure we have only covered models for this. Only adult covered models, please. Please. Thank you. Um, so basically, this is a website. There's a lot of them, like Quick Poses is one. Uh, this is another one. They're all over the internet. If you just Google like figure drawing practice or gesture drawing generator or anything like that, they'll show up. And I'm so excited. Oh, man. I'm... Mm. Are you ready to do some gesture drawing, Nathan? I'm I'm dr I'm drawing along. Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, feel free to draw along if you'd like to in the in the chat. Um, but yeah, you can set the time intervals and everything. I'm gonna be doing 30 seconds because we want to be moving really fast here. We're not trying to get an accurate drawing, and you don't want to get hung up on any one thing. Mm -hmm. Um, but as we start, the first thing I'm gonna do is actually not timed. I want to show everybody. Uh, kind of when I'm doing a gesture drawing, what I'm looking for in order to achieve it fast. So let's see if I can, yeah, I can pause. I'll pause on this strong ax man. This is a great, you know, he's covered, but we do still get some nips, which I think is important. Yeah, we get some nips. It's a little something, it's a family friendly, but there's a little, a little something for everyone. And I'm actually just going to snip this guy out real quick. Uh, just to show off some things. I really just wanted to see two of him. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so I honestly think that if you're sitting down to draw and don't know what to draw, gesture drawing is so easy to just do. You literally just go to one of these websites, click go, and you're off to the races and you don't yeah. have to think about anything. There's no pressure at all. <laughs> um, so I think some things to look out for that will help you with gesture drawing when you're looking at a pose. Um, I'm usually a, I start with like sort of the torso shape, the general shape, because mm -hmm. I think that kind of informs where everything else goes. Mm -hmm. So for this guy, if I were doing it, I'd be looking at, let me make this red so it's easy to see. <laughs> I'd be looking at sort of this, this shape is going to be my important one here. Cause it kind of indicates to me that it's facing this away. Mm -hmm. uh, then a thing to look at is the shoulders and like what their relative height is to one another. Uh, these are basically straight across. So you kind of have a straight shoulder line here and the hips too, are the other thing I would look at. And those are basically also straight. So this is a pretty easy pose. Um, the next thing I kind of look for is knees. And because of the angle on this, this knee is a bit lower than this yeah, knee. Coming at us. So these are sort of landmarks that as you're doing your gesture, you can look for these different things to make sure you're on the right track. Uh, and then uh, we'll talk about anatomy more too later, but the position of the elbow is important and then the position of the hand sort of relative to the hips. It's all relative positions. So that's kind of mostly what you want to be peeking at. Uh, and then when you draw, you want to be very loose and gestural with it. So we'll actually just do some quick gesture drawings for a little bit. Not for too terribly long, but just to give you a sense of kind of how I would go about this. So we'll hit play on this and I'm actually just going to go and and do the thing now. Do the dang thing. As I would. And I'm kind of looking at the fabrics a little bit too. Uh, kind of where the arm falls. Neck is like this. Uh, chest is going this way. Knees come down kind of to the bottom of the fabric. Feet are just triangles. And the, the key thing to remember here is this doesn't have to be good. And see, that one's gone. So then you stop. It's gone, yeah. Next one. We got ballerina here, so we kind of want to get this in there. The arm is going up this way. This one's out to the side. Legs straight down. This one's out here. Head is a little tilted. And you kind of get a bit of the foot in. And what this is going to... Just, it just loosens you up. It loosens you it up, like yes. Yeah. This. this is also a great warm-up. Like, I recommend takes doing this. all the pressure off. And it's no gone. one has guys to back. see these. Oh, different axe pose. Different axe pose. Coming at sort us. sort of an overswing here. And we've got some foreshortening on the arms we want to indicate. Uh, head is like touching the shoulders. Axe going up this way. And it's just like fun. It's fun to do because you literally don't have time <laughs> to worry about it. Uh, you have to be. You have to be moving on, and it's done. Next one. And so, like as you can see, with ones like that, I did not finish the pose, uh, but it doesn't matter because it's gone now. You don't have to look at it anymore. And you, you see, I do mine on different layers too. So, like once it's gone, it's literally gone. I don't even have to see it again. And like this one, I think I'm doing a pretty bad job at, but also that doesn't matter. Oh my God, this is horrifying. Oh, wow. Look at that. Uh, you'll also <laughs> notice I start with different body parts, depending on the gesture. I kind of start drawing whichever, whatever I'm drawn to the most when I first look at it. Yes. Yeah, In this case, it was that dropping arm in the front. And I think also because it's a vertical shape, it gives you a lot of area to make comparisons to with the rest of the body. And this horrible face, which is not my favorite. Oh, Kickman. Kick, <laughs> Kickman's up. Oh, it's Kickman. Kickman's here. Be careful, everyone. Oh, that's such a good one. Mm. A thing that's really helpful is like the line of pants gives you a very good landmark because that line is very clear. Yeah. And then the kick is going up past the arm. 
And we'll just do like a couple more of these. Kind of get got the big chest hair. line in. Big hair. He's gone. Oh, he's back though. He's doing a different kick. Oh, this kick man. Can't get enough of this kick man. Torso curving around. So this is a wild pose. It's like the the other one, but upside down. What kicks can't he do? <laughs> I've yet to see a kick that that he could not achieve. And sort of the big old pant shapes. He's got. oh, there's that <laughs> full body covered. Got the scary, yeah. the scary full it's body. A, a Voldo looking ass person. Sometimes you got to do a Voldo looking ass person, and that's just that's just art. That's just art. Sometimes, sometimes art is Voldo. <laughs> Voldo is art from Soul Caliber. Hand is that way. This one meets the ground. There are the foot hits. Head this is this Jacob. Way. This rules. I should do this more. <laughs> it's it's really easy to do, is the thing. Yeah, and it really really helps. Oh, this is a fancy man. Fancy man. Got to make him a little fancy man with big pants. A little smaller. I love these some, big pants. Some wide pants on this man. And also, it should be said, if you're just starting out, feel free to make the time longer. If this is like too fast. For you you can do not, do a minute not too long not too yeah. long no longer than like a minute i would say oh we're back to this <laughs> just a dreadful sort of plague doctor esque yeah which is not <laughs> the shoulders just all hunched it's just like Meh. but the cool thing is that when you're doing this your brain is internalizing this information that it's taking in, like without you even having to like think hard about it. It's just taking in this pose information and it's like saving yep. what it can so you can do it better next time. You're, you're, you're literally working a muscle by doing this. It's like yes. connections in your brain between what you see and what your hands are doing. Now, and so you one. will, you will just get better. I'm out of practice doing this sort of thing. So mine are, big messes but the, that's the that's, that's the, the point yeah, that's, that's the whole point or this is input not output no one has to see these uh so we'll do this twisty guy and then we'll stop twisty guy just because he's got a really good pose here oh he's really he's helpful. a this is a this is a pose school teacher maybe passion pose <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> this guy definitely is a a faculty member this is how he enters the classroom. I'm here. Uh, I'm actually, I want to pause on him because he'll be helpful for what I want to talk about in a sec. Take me back. Take me back to Paradise City. Uh, okay, so what we've done here is just straight up practicing figure drawing for a while um, without worrying about it or thinking about it too hard. Now, the next thing I would recommend as soon as you're done with this, we have to remember our, our special two-step uh, program here. You learn from referencing and then you reinforce through imagination. So what we're going to do now is you take this away and we're just going to spend some time drawing poses without looking at anything. Same style of way, uh, just gesture drawings. But you're going to make up the gesture on the spot. Uh, something I like to do is kind of just start with like a shape. Like maybe it's like a circle and so i'm like okay maybe it's like a person bending over this way maybe they're like reaching over their head maybe i did a crop accidentally and maybe their head kind of goes this way maybe they're kicking out a leg so what we're doing here and again this doesn't have to be perfect it doesn't have to be good you just want to spend some time using those muscles you just worked to make poses from your own brain. Um, and this is gonna teach you how to do poses from the imagination and quickly also, which is important. You don't wanna spend a whole drawing working out a pose. You wanna get the pose done and then- Guilty. And then you wanna move on. <laughs> Maybe we got like kind of a- Another thing, uh, 
you can do is um and this this might not be part of the lesson plan but one thing that when i took a figure drawing class one thing that the the professor had us do was um just draw like big sort of blobby shapes and then try and make uh people in poses so that they filled up the shape oh yeah so totally like, that's a really good exercise you do you do the whole it looks like they're all sort of wrapped in in cellophane but do you want to do you want to show that off oh okay yeah sure i mean if you want I'll, to it's a good exercise yes yeah, yeah I'll, I'll do one yeah go ahead and share real quick i'll do one you have to let me you no, have, have to, to let I me have to let you do it you have to let me it's not enough to just i have to let you do it you have to let me so like just sort of draw any old shape i'm gonna hold on and then I'm it's fixing like it, everyone hold on oh here we go great okay so you draw like any old shape, like the sort of potato shape that I've drawn. And then you just sort of decide how you want, like, like maybe this is an arm reaching over like this. And then there's a shoulder here. And then maybe, you know, there's like body going this ways. And then like one leg coming over like this doesn't have to be doesn't have to like make a ton of sense like these people can be very flexible like this toes doing a big point oh yeah sure um then like <laughs> i didn't really do it <laughs> i didn't really do it this person is having a bad time <laughs> this person's trapped in an alien egg sack <laughs> please don't make me be in here but that's the point is like there's no you don't you just and then it's done and it's gone and you've moved on yeah and you're on to the next one and, it, and it's like it breaks your brain out of the sort of stiff places it can get stuck in makes your brain get a little looser with its ideas just put every make everyone the the space baby from What's that Kubrick movie? 2001 A Space Odyssey. 2000 and, and, and 2001. Everyone's a floating space baby. Called. Maybe there's two people in here. Because again, I didn't fill it. Like I said, I was trying to. And twins. <laughs> right? Coming out. Yeah. Remember that? <laughs> How could I forget? We reference it and so like, much. The proportions... The proportions aren't great. I haven't really done them good. These these people's bones are broken, but you know, they're just like they're just doing they're just doing some stuff. Yeah, and it loosens up your your whole your whole goose. You want to loosen up that goose? Loose that goose, but. Bless you. Right it's a stream. Funny. It's not even Julia's stream. But still, she signifies. You know. Yeah. Like that. Yeah, totally. It's a big, me it's a big mess. You just make a big mess. But this is what practice is. Yeah. Practice is a big mess. I'll do one more. Do one more blob. And I think accepting the big mess is part of, of practice. And a, another benefit of doing things like this is that the more you do it, the less precious you become about everything you draw. Uh, because you have so much practice drawing things that you're just like, whatever, I'm, I'm learning. I'm trying stuff. Um, it actually kind of rewires your brain a bit. You become less... Less critical, I should say. Oh, I like this one. Kind of a big, spooky, yeah. emerging figure. Yeah. So, you know, you just try stuff. Just try stuff out. Doesn't always have to... 
And then like, yeah, every every so often one of them you may like strike inspiration, be like, ooh, I actually want to come back to this pose and like work on it more and do art, do do real art with it. Totally. Later. The, the practice can become art at a later time. Yeah. If you want it to. And I think one of the biggest things that sitting down and doing gesture drawing does for you is it makes you start drawing. Yes. And it makes you start drawing fast. So you don't have time to second guess. Yeah. As soon as you click go, you got to go. So you can't be like, oh, I don't know. I don't feel like it or I'm scared or what if it's bad? It's too late. You got to draw now before this ax man is off the screen. I'm going to, I'm going to give it back to you. Pass it on back. this there we go uh so yeah this is this is one sort of practice regimen that i would that i would recommend uh do figure drawing for like you know 20 minutes or however long you want to and then do the same thing but just from your imagination for the same amount of time and i will say yours are much more you, yours just look more practiced because you've you've done this you've done this practice more than I have, and so you're you can really see sort of the the structure and the proportions are 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 more sort of polished in yours, um, but they aren't they aren't necessarily going to look like this when you start. No, I mean it's it's really it take like I've been doing this has been like my primary mode of practice for a while now. Has yeah. been doing this type of thing because for my own art gesture and like the emotion of it is the primary sort of factor since i don't draw a lot of backgrounds and i don't do a lot of color mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of the most important thing for me so i focus really heavily on this and you can also kind of make that decision for yourself too like what do you want to focus on in your art like what, what do you want what do you want on. what do you want from me <laughs> you too can draw this strong prancing He's doing such a fancy lad prance, this but he's fancy, so strong. This fancy walk, you can do it too. <laughs> Just traipsing through the garden. This is a traipse. This is definitely a traipse. So here's one thing you can do that's that's really that's really going to help you out. And and just to go back again because I want to keep hammering on it. Um, it all ties back to sort of the overarching theme of this lesson, which is to learn through referencing and then reinforce that knowledge from your imagination when you practice and you'll spend like 30 minutes doing something like this and you will have gotten so much better than if you had spent 30 minutes like agonizing over the specific lines in a piece of art like yeah. that's not going to teach you very much uh, it does teach you something it's not like worthless but you need to kind of yeah. save that for when it's helpful and uh, this is just going to make you a lot better, a lot faster. Uh, now we can move on to the next thing. Oh, I hear my cat. She's got the, she's got the coughs. She's a little sick. Oh, joy this time. She's joy got a this little time. cold. Uh, okay. So next, I wanted to talk about if you wanted to practice anatomy. Because gesture and anatomy are different. Yes. Uh, so I do want to bring back our friend. Where's our friend? Axe man? This man. Oh, this guy. Twisty, twisty teacher. And we're going to bring him over. Because this is a thing that I find very helpful. And uh, stop. Photoshop. Stop it. Photo stop. Photo stop. We're going to make this man, make him big. Okay, so let's say you sit down and, and this is kind of all dependent on when you sit down to draw and you're thinking, where where's my weak spots right now, right? What do I need to work on that I feel like I could get better at? I want to make sure that if you watch this lesson, you'll have your bases covered in regards to what you can sit down and do to improve at these things. So this is if you're struggling with sort of the basic building blocks of a person, the basic sort of anatomy. Uh, a good way to practice that, and this is the, the reference period of the practice, is to take an actual photo. There's a lot of really good 
websites with pose reference. There's one I found recently. Let me see if I can find it. It's called like characterdesigns.com. Dot com. Um, I can show this because no one's no one's junk is visible on the homepage here. Wonderful. Uh, but if you look at this, it's got it's full of galleries of people, both nude and non-nude, doing all sorts of like crazy poses with like weapons and whatever you need. So you can go to like the non nudes and costumes and like look at all this stuff they have. It's like, oh, I want male model action poses. And look, here's our guy. That's the same guy. So you have all these different action poses you can you can pull from to do this kind of work with. Uh, so we've got our twisty our twisty friend here. And just wearing the, those tighties. What I would do if I were like, I need to learn how this dude's fitting together. Um, what I'm going to do first is is lower his opacity, and I'm going to try to break down the major shapes that I see in his body by just drawing straight over the top of of him. Um, yeah, one it, of the nice things about working digitally is like you can just you can just do a, a trace if you need to. Yeah, exactly. But what you want to be doing instead of like an, like just tracing the outline is that you want to be thinking about the three dimensional space his body's occupying and drawing the yeah. three dimensional shapes. Find those shapes that it would be making. Like here's the jaw here, ear goes here. We get the nose in there. Uh, the neck is like sort of a tubey tubey thing. He's got this shoulder muscle here that's pretty prominent. There's going to be another one over there. Uh, chest is sort of like a big one of these. And for like how to find these shapes, there's a ton of YouTube reference for anatomy for beginners that will show you like a good good ways to break this stuff down if you're like an absolute beginner at this sort of thing. Uh, then we got sort of the arms break down into these segmented tubes. And you kind of want to pay attention to the angle at which things are going as well. Uh, for instance, since this arm is this hand is facing us, the forearm is completely foreshortened. So if it's like normally like this when it's going out, as it turns towards you, obviously it's going to get shorter in width. And it's like rotating a cylinder in 3D space, obviously, is going to look more and more like this until it's eventually facing you and it's basically a circle. So like that's where it would come into the hand and that's where it would connect sort of to the body hand on top of that. And you can you can do this fast. You can like get like sort of these abs in here. But you want to be thinking about it while you do it. Don't do it mindlessly. You want to be like, where are the things placed? Where are they placed in reference to each other? What's their like general lengths? Like how kind of this length here is similar to this length here. So you can remember this stuff for when you're drawing your own characters from imagination. Be like, oh, I remember that the length kind of from the shoulder to the elbow and the elbow to the wrist was a similar length. So I know that ratio now. Slap the underwear on this guy. Uh, then the legs are, are again, they're tubes. They're weird tubes. And the feet are weird triangles. And I'm just going to kind of fill in with my imagination his other leg here that I can't see. And the, ni the nice thing about the, the tidy whities is they're like literally shaped exactly like the, the pelvis zone. Like yeah. that's how I remember. That's how I remember what shape it is, is you just draw the tidy whities on, on the base drawing. Yeah, and... totally. I do that too. That's like my, my main way of going about that. They're shaped to cover that part because that's what that part is shaped like. So then we've got this uh, sort of skeleton here, which gets you the basic form. And you can see it in a more basic way. You can kind of see the twist of it and, and how everything works. Uh, then a good way to practice this and kind of solidify it in your brain is try to do the same thing, but this time do it out to the side of the guy. So we're not drawing on top, but we're going to try to sort of replicate what we did here and try to get all the anatomy bits in and try to be as close as we can to what we're seeing 
uh, what we're seeing in the image. And this is not going to be, you know, perfect. And again, that is that is totally fine. But you can kind of remember how the chest went into the armpit here. The point of this exercise is not to be perfect, but to compare when you're done to what it actually looks like. And you can see then where your weaknesses are. So we're going to get this arm in here. And you want to try to go fast so you can do a lot of this. This arm, which had the foreshortening in the hand. This hand back here. We got the leg going forward. Forward. And down. I didn't do a trace because I don't have the image, so I'm just doing it twice. Yeah, just I do it twice. My, I think my second one is slightly better than my first one. I just mean, in, <laughs> over the course of doing it twice. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it is. I'm noticing things. I Jacob, mean, I... do you ever do you want to just like hang out and do this sometime together? Because I, it's way more fun to have a buddy. I mean, yeah, totally. Because that would make me practice more too. Yeah. And that I is, just, I can feel myself improving. That's the fun part about it. You really do feel. It's like feeling the burn, except the muscles are art. And like, I can already see in mind the places where I've, yeah, where I've made mistakes. Uh, it's gonna I, happen. I have a habit where I make everything wider than it's supposed to be. You like making them little dump, them dumpy dumpling. I make everything characters. squarter and wider than it's supposed to be, and it's it's gotten like better over time as I've tried to focus on it. But it's still, I can see already that this is going to be wider than it's supposed to be. But that's that's part of what you're learning here. You're learning to see in your own art where the issues are, so that you can fix them as you go. Um, so this this is good enough for like the purpose of this the purpose of this exercise here. This guy's got long arms. I guess it's like coming at us, which yes. is why it looks so big. It's really twisted back. Uh, so then what I would do is I just make my legs too short always. I do that too. It doesn't help that this shot is like kind of from above, so his legs are shorter looking than they would be if yeah. it was straight on. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, Joshua said, for every one of these drawings I've tried to follow along with, I always end up drawing the first part too big, and then when I draw outward to the rest of the body, it doesn't seem to fit on the canvas. Yep. That'll happen. <laughs> that happens to me almost every time, too. You can see I made this too big already. Um, but how you actually kind of double check yourself is you can lower the opacity on this and we can take what we drew and we can slide it on over top here and usually i try to like shrink it to fit and it's then pretty close and then see like where i messed up so you can see if i line up the torso uh i made the arm a bit the torso is first of all way too wide like i said like all of this space uh should have been thinner um then i i made the leg stance wider so I brought this knee too far out when it needed to be more in. I made this arm go out too much. I made this arm go out too much. I did exactly sort of, the thing I said I do, where I make you sort of exaggerated. Yeah, everything I of, make is a little bigger. <laughs> you stretched it. You car you cartoonized him. Totally, which is not you, like wrong, but it's good yeah. to to do this exercise to see how close you are to mimicking the sort of actual natural figure. So yeah. that when you do exaggerate, you know what you're exaggerating. You're doing it with intentionality and not just doing it because it's part of your sort of natural way of drawing. You want to be doing it knowingly. Yeah. Uh, just have better command over your tools. So yeah, this is a good way to practice. I highly recommend this. And this, again, you can take a little more time on. You shouldn't spend hours, obviously. <coughs> Bless you. Excuse me. But spend a few minutes on each one. Go a little slower and try to pay more attention since this is more structural and less gestural. Yeah. And then uh, once you've you know done that, 
like I said at the beginning, you want to reinforce from imagination. So like we did before, you'll want to just pull up a blank canvas and draw a different pose uh, yourself and kind of see how if you've like improved your ability to and you want to, you want to make it similar. So like try and get sort of a similar type of pose as to what you just learned. Maybe like change the direction. So I'll have it going like this way instead. Maybe this leg is forward instead of the other one. Maybe the angle is slightly different. And uh, this is going to really fix in your mind the information that you took in because now you've had to execute on it without without help maybe we've got an arm going up this way don't know what kind of thing this this dude is doing and again it doesn't really matter how good this is because there's no way to like check this against anything um yeah this is just for you it's just for you. Maybe it's like a real, a real sort of lunge here. We go like back, yeah. Bring it way back and like this. That leg is way too long, I can see that. And I can see it because I just looked at myself make things go out too far. Yep. And so now my brain is used to seeing that already more than it was before. And so I can see that issue. Uh, then I want to sort of replicate the foreshortened arm that I just learned. Uh, that was kind of going like this with a hand. Maybe he's doing like a stop sign hand. My chest going this way. This is twisting. Head and neck going forwards. Yeah, we want to have like the jaw here and the ear and the nose. And here's our here's our fella. And this is this is truly a wild pose that I don't yeah. think is entirely accurate, but that's not really the point. It's about it's about building your sort of mental language. It doesn't have to be right. It's uh, That's why it's practice. It's not supposed to be good. It's, you're supposed to be bad, ideally, because you're learning new things. Yeah, it's just for you. I feel like I have to say that like every time because that's where yeah. a lot of the hangups that people experience derive from that feeling of like, I'm doing a bad job at something that not. I want to be good at. You're doing a good job at practicing. Exactly. If you're Even struggling, if you're doing a bad job at drawing, you're doing a good job at practicing. If you're struggling, it means you're pushing yourself in some sort of way. I think of that um that David Bowie quote where it's like you shouldn't feel safe. You should always feel a little bit out of your comfort zone. Yeah, I mean if you want to be growing in whatever you're doing, you definitely need to be operating outside of your comfort zone. And right, that way, you, can't... You, you practice outside of your comfort zone so you can execute inside of your comfort zone. Yes. You practice to expand your comfort zone. Then when it comes time to actually do something, you got this big old comfort zone you can work in and knock stuff out quickly. Can, uh, I, can I share my, my yeah, yeah. from uh, imagination pose I did? I would love I'm, to I'm, see it. I'm pretty proud of it. I would love to see it. Oh yeah, nice. That looks great. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have thought to do this if if it wasn't if we weren't doing this mere mere moments ago. Yeah, you would not have thought to do this, and this is the the nice thing about putting in that new information. Yeah, because now, like when you go later, like say two weeks from now, you're going to draw something on Drawfee. Uh, some part of this is going to be in your head. You might break out a pose more like this when normal in, in the past you would not have tried it or have even thought to try it. Dis oh, I like this disgusted walk. It's like, ew. Ugh. Yeah, he's got some stuff on his hand. He's like trying <laughs> to shake it off. 
Ew, why did I, did I touch that? <laughs> why did I? There was jelly all over the door handle. <laughs> so much jelly on the door handle. All right. It's one yeah, of my but... favorite ongoing Justin McElroy bits. <laughs> Putting the jelly on the things you don't want Again, to touch. Again, it's still, it's not, yeah. And it's not like perfect. I can see I made this shoulder like too big. But, but the fact okay. that you can see that yeah. is what we're going for. Yeah. Anyway. Train in the eye, I'll, train in I'll the brain. Send it, I'll send it back to you. This That looks great. Uh, let me bring back my crazy, strong guy doing this impossible pose. Looking at it again, I think in order to make this pose possible, first I need to be able to control Photoshop. There we go. I think I need to bring... The arm I don't think can really go back that far. Let's see if we brought it more like like this, foreshortened it a bit more. Maybe it would be. This man's so strong. Maybe it would be more uh, achievable of a pose. Yeah. For a man to make. No matter how strong. I love this. I love this like fight protagonist. Yeah, he's ready to fight. He's channeling the energy into his punch. Uh, this method also, I should say, works really well. If you're if you're working on anatomy, it works really well for specific body parts, which is another thing that's good to do. Mm -hmm. Like Pinterest is a really good reference for it. If you go to Pinterest and look up like hand reference or nose reference or anything, I'll actually just I can just show. I can just show. Yeah. I'll I'll bring it over here. If we go for like hand hand reference. You check this out. Look at all of this. You've got not you have really well drawn hands. You have tutorials on how to draw hands and different perspectives. And I don't you just have Oh, you don't, I don't see it. You don't see it? Oh, I must be sharing the wrong screen. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Could you hold on, please? I'm holding on. There we go. Oh, those. Ooh, yeah. And like, if you go through this and practice all these angles, you'll be about a million times better at drawing hands. I did a, uh, like, just basic drawing class. I, like, taught a basic drawing class at a summer camp a couple summers ago and basically before every lesson I would just go on Pinterest and pull a bunch of reference images and be like so here's one way to think about like breaking down the structure of this body part and like because yeah there were like this one over here where it's like very simplified and then there's like these ones where they're like really doing more curv curvy lines like there are lots of different yeah. ways to break down the structure of something there's so much just like information on this page if you just like take these things and try to replicate them and try to like break them down and learn how they're oh uh, people every people people on stream saw the pinterest it was just me oh, it, was it was just you it was just me on the zoom did not see it well now you see it now i see it so that's good that's just a knife that's just a knife in the corner um, but yeah, Pinterest is great. <laughs> that is a knife in the corner, but this is a promoted post. Uh, Case knives. People who like looking at hands also like knife. They also like this knife. Look at all the ways you can have gun in hand. Yeah. Look at all the ways you can hold brush. You can flick brush around. Anyways, highly recommend doing exactly what we just did, but with the specific things you want to work on. There's this like nose reference. Look at all of this. Noses, noses. Look at all these noses. Noses. And this dips a little bit into something I want to talk about uh, later. I actually might just talk about it now. We can talk about it now. Since we're since we're doing it, but since we're um, on the subject. The, the same way you can practice gesture and practice anatomy, you can also practice style 
uh, or expand your style uh, through basically this exact same method that I've just shown you. So I'll, I can go through this quickly since I've basically already done it. Oh, this was what you were talking about on that uh, secret sleepover stream, yeah? Yes, yeah. Um, but I'll go over it again. I caught, again I caught a little of that one. Um, maybe if someone in chat would like to tell me if you have like an artist you really like, you really like their art style, if you can think of one and tell me. And if they can't, maybe you can, Nathan. Just someone okay. I can pull up as an example. Um, the delay is pretty serious on on YouTube stream for some reason. Do a do a gorillas. A gorillas is very good, and then I can also do one from the chat once it comes up. Yeah, gorillas is always what I go to because it was just like the first time I saw a like a cartoon that I was like, "This looks cool." Yeah, this looks cool. This is just like they made it look cool. This is a good image. <laughs> People said Karina and Julia as their first two artists. <laughs> we, we can do that. We can do that. Yeah, too. that'd be fun. Uh, I'll do this one first, and then we'll we'll do that. Just gotta get this image in here. Let me just get this image in here, please. There we go. That's a good picture. Good quality picture. Yeah. High quality JPEG. High quality JPEG. Love a high quality JPEG. This is a PNG, Nathan, because it's transparent. Ugh. So. Gah. So. Uh, <laughs> it's like that Yu-Gi-Oh meme where it's like, love a high quality JPEG, and then you <laughs> just flips it around. It's a PNG. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so same way as like practicing anatomy and you can, you can practice the anatomy of like artists who style you like too, to see how like their shape language works. But let's talk about like stylistic elements specifically. Like I want to look at Murdoch's face because Murdoch's got one of those faces that I just his love nose, the, the style. His of. nose looks like a little, uh, just what, what's going on? I love it. Exactly. And like, here's the thing that you can take note of. It's like, what if I wanted to draw it's something? A little thumb. It's like a little Murdoch. thumb coming down on his face. Um, what we could do is, and I'm, I'm redlining this again over the top. Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to get a sense for Murdoch's sort of facial ratios. If or fascios. His fascios. Uh, because something about Murdoch is if you make all like the lines of where his different stuff falls on his head, his nose is like really high up towards his eyes and yeah. his mouth is really high up compared to a normal human face. Everything is like squished towards the middle of the head. Yeah. So that's something you can keep in mind for the style of how to make something look like this. Also, the specific shapes like drawing a nose that's like this little bean. That's a little bean. Which is, is uh, interesting. And then you can kind of get these eye shapes in here too. They're sort of circular and then just a big dot pupil. And so what you can do is look at these elements, ear shape, and like you're not just outlining it without thinking. What you're doing is you're outlining it and then saying in your head, this is what shape comprises this look. Yeah. So then you can go out, you know, to the side and be like, okay, so if I wanted to make like a similar type of character. So what we've done is we've we've learned from the reference and now we're That's going to one. reinforce it with our imagination. That's step two. So, you know, looking at it here, I can put a little bean right in the middle of the face yeah. for the nose. And I see that the eyes touch the nose on both sides. And they're they're pretty big. So we can get the eyes in there. And, uh, you know, some of this is like naturally going to be imbued with my own sort of style because everything you do has your style in it. Yep. But I'm, I'm taking note of like these stylistic elements that make up this character. And then the mouth is also really high up. And it kind of has like a dip. And it's it's this prominent feature here is the the sort of dimple at the corner. 
And then you can like get more detailed if you want. And like, there's lines on this part of the nose. He's got the sort of stuff going on here. The, uh, the hair. The hair touches the eyes. The hair touches and goes over the eyes uh, pretty much all the way across, which looks relatively uncomfortable. Um, yeah, you don't really see anything above the eyes or nose. So these are the kind of questions and like things you can be telling yourself like as you try to replicate something like this to get a feel for it, a feel good. This is like a perfect blend of Jacob's style and Gorilla's style. I love it. And then the little ear. And then the cool thing about this is that in doing this, uh, some of the elements that you... <laughs> Gorillas plus Jacob equal Muppet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It is very Muppety. Um, but like we've been saying the whole time, you know, it's practice. So you don't have to make a perfect repli replication. doesn't matter if you nail it or if you don't nail it. All that matters is in doing this, I'm subconsciously and consciously taking in elements of this style. You've added to your brain your brain's stores. I've added to my brain's stores. And because of that, I now have like these simplifications. Some of them are going to stick in my head of how they, how, uh, you know, what's his name? Jamie Hewlett. What's his name? The gorillas artist. Uh, uh yeah, it sounds Jamie. Yeah, I'm just Googling you look it. it up and tell me. Yeah. Jamie Hewlett, you, you nailed it. Nice. Good job, Jacob. Uh, some aspects of Jamie Hewlett's style and the way that Jamie Hewlett simplifies things are going to stick in my brain, and maybe I can make good use of them in a, in a later piece, even if I don't like know that's what I'm doing. It's just information. It, it like increases your library of things you can draw from uh, later, yep. later on, which it's is due. It's freaking cool, man. Your mind palace, yes, Casey. And so you can go through and do this with like the whole the whole piece if you want to. And it's like don't try to replicate it exactly, but try to kind of think what makes the the different pieces what, tick. What gives it its distinctive look? Yeah. Uh, so that's how you can do like style practice. And also, I'm like immediately drawn to this face too because of the upward angle. We'll do a quick one with this as well. Just map it out a bit because I love this, how it goes kind of like up this way. Remember when she kicked the zombie so hard? I remember that. In the music video. Chin is down here. You got kind of this little nose shape that I think is cool. And also this type of mouth that like the upward angle mouth that curves up in the middle. I love that look this kind of thing and so then you can kind of try to emulate these little stylistic elements yeah the shape of this sort of almondy eye you notice how it gets flatter at the bottom because it's you're looking up at it so it's rounder at the top flatter at the bottom and so you end up just like noticing these trends too and how things work and it improves your it improves your biz overall. You just want to improve your biz. Improve that biz. Improve that biz. Your biz is getting improved, whether you like it or not. Yeah, the brain is wonderful like that. It's just it's just storing it all in there. And I, I've said this like a million times now, but I'm going to say it again. The best part about this type of practice is you don't have to sit there and think. What what should I like? I don't know what to do. Like I don't know what to draw. Like I don't it's have any inspiration. There. I don't have any motivation. This requires no motivation. You just have to sit down and start doing it because all the stuff you need to draw to get better is just out there already. Yeah, you you know what you like. And even if you don't like like I showed last time, you can go to sites like ArtStation or Pinterest. Let's take a and look you at. Can, uh, you can see what other people like. We'll take and a look if, at ArtStation real quick. Yeah. See what's on the front page. Yeah, I do that all the time. 
there's always some cool stuff there. We can go on here, scroll down. Look at this. Look at this look cool at this. drawing. Look at that. There's already, a look at this. Oh, this so rocks. cool. The shapes and colors in here. There's so much to learn from this. And on ArtStation, they always have these big high-res assets you can pull. Yeah. That's just a, a great pose, a great angle, a great yeah. character design. Great shape language. And, the, and like, you know... Some cool, uh, some cool like digital painting stuff happening in there too. If you want to take this it, this little squirt that friend. extra stuff. I love a squirt friend. So I just see like what grabs my eye, and then I pull it into Photoshop and redline it, and then try to draw something kind of like it. Yeah. Um. Let's see. I said I would look at what Karina's style. Yeah. Let's see what Karina's posted lately. We'll do that real quick before we move on. What time is it? 419? We got time. We'll just copy this recent piece Karina has done. Get this schmando in here. Mm. Let's knife. Let's knife. <laughs> Uh, Karina's I, clothing designs are always so good. Yeah, it's so good. I feel like with uh, all of my Drawfee co-hosts, there's already a lot of elements of what I do that I have lifted directly. Big same. From all, all of your art. So like you yep. can see elements of, of everyone's art in my style just because we draw <laughs> together so much. Yep. And are like direct inspirations. I I got better at just drawing humans w just watching Karina draw just like the way she thinks about that stuff. I was like, "Oh, yep. I I should start doing that." Whenever but worse, I see Karina do a gesture drawing. I'm always like, "Oh my god, I have to go practice." Is everything okay over there, Nathan? Um, Emily's looking for her shoes. Where's your shoes, Emily? Did you lose your shoes? Nathan's gone. Emily lost her shoes. A tragedy. Continue without me. I'll it's be right a... back. Okay. Oh wow, he's really gone. I'm left alone. Uh, what I'm doing here, let me pull the chat back up so I can see. What I'm doing here is I'm making lines to sort of indicate the hairline and where kind of the eyes and eyebrows are. On an actual human face, this line would be for the eyebrows specifically, but when people cartoon, they tend to make the eyes bigger. And so it generally crosses like the vague eye area and then tip of the nose, mouth, chin, and you can kind of get a sense for the spacing of all these things on a person's style. Uh, so you can, if you want to try to emulate the spacing, you can. Did Nathan leave you? Nathan did leave me. I'm Do you want to come Nathan. talk for a second? Yeah, I could be Nathan. You want to be Nathan? Yeah, oh my gosh, you're doing great. I love this. That's really good. Hey Jacob, you're doing great. That's really good, Nathan. Yeah. Um, people asked for breakdowns of Karina's style and your style. Cool. While I was doing style looks. Dope. Julia's style is going to be harder because you do so much. Uh, puzzling. Not puzzling. You do so much. We found, uh, oh God, we found the shoes. Nathan's back. Nathan's we back. Found the, we found want, the shoes. Do you want to talk to Nathan? Or are you good? Are you doing your own No, thing? I don't want to talk to Nathan. That's fair. I'm kidding. Hi, Nathan. <laughs> Hi, Julia. <laughs> she can't hear me, you, but. you, Nathan. He's waiting. Hi. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Hi. Um, you should draw Julia Styles in Julia's style. Nathan said I should draw Julia Styles in Julia's style. <laughs> yeah. If this were a normal droppy stream, maybe I would. <laughs> um, do you want to know? Um, do you want to know where the shoes were? Where were the shoes? They were outside. 
They were outside. They were, out, they were outside the apartment in the hallway. We had taken them off. I would not have coming guessed. in, and we forgot that that's where they were. That'll get you. Um. Anyways, while you were gone, I was talking <laughs> about these lines I made on the the head here. Yeah. Which was to to get a sense for the spacing of the pieces of the face. This is so getting yeah. I'm glad for... you brought Julia in for that because this is this is looking sort of like Julia's face rune that we did on a, a previous draw class. Yeah, I usually but I do it very lightly because all mm -hmm. I'm really caring about is the ratio. I want to know like okay, what's the sort of hairline to eyes to nose to mouth to chin distances? Yeah, and then they're like on Karina's they're all roughly pretty even. Uh, she's got a pretty even face structure. I know on mine, I like squash things as I do everything. Uh, but that'll give you a good sense for when you're trying to imitate or trying to use aspects of the style, what your spacing should be as well. Uh, yeah. Then I like to look at things like the, the pieces of the face, like this shape, this nose shortcut, oh. and this nose shortcut. It's so... It just it looks so good. You kind of get a sense for what sort of shapes these make. And like, then as you kind of fill them out into 3D shapes, it sticks in your brain as to kind of what angle. If you wanted to do this yourself, how to make the shapes look at like the angle you need them to for, for a nose. What angle? What devil? What, what devil? And then I always like the, the eyes are really cool. They're always kind of at this this angle where you have like a short line and a long line. If yeah. the person's looking to the right, it's always like shorter than longer. And the opposite for the left. And you can see how the eye shape changes from character to character. Like take note of that. Like Nando's got sort of a rounder eye. Schmidt's got more of an angular, narrower eye. Mm -hmm. So these are all sort of things you can look at and pay attention to when you're like breaking down a style. Which I think is a is a nod to the fact that Julia originally designed Schmidt. Oh, totally. It's got to be. So it's like uh, that's how she drew the eyes. Yeah. And then it's like maybe I want to think about this this hair up here. How's how's she doing this hair? And it's like, okay, let's look at like the big shapes. There's kind of this whole part here. I see is like a big one shape as the general top is kind of this flame shape. Yeah. Then we got, this is just bits. There's flame shape, there's bits. This is a bit that you add onto it. This kind of goes in front. And like the hairline is just these like indicator lines, which this is something that I don't usually ever do. Have the hairline just be like several lines. Yeah, and then you have to and then you color, color it. it. You can't you can't just uh, do do expand fill on that. Yeah, I feel like I don't, for some reason that doesn't work as well for me when I try to do it. Maybe like with my style, it doesn't fit as well. This is really this feeling is really like here. a culmination of both of the previous draw classes because Karina animated Nando and Julia broke down face structure. And now we're, we're doing just sort of like a how to practice taken taking that and doing it yourself practice taking that practice doing it another thing i would do usually is like block in the torso so that i can get a sense for like how how wide the torso is because i when i'm drawing i tend to make if i'm just like going to do a quick little thing here a lot of times i'll make the torso like too narrow Yes, I do that as well. Um, and in reality, you can go like a lot wider and have it still be probably even like closer to more naturalistic. Yeah. And it's like... Because we spend so much time looking at the face. It's bigger in our minds than it is in real life. That was a thing I, I remember from like an art class I took is that like, when you look at things in real life, you're you're usually only looking at one part of it at a time. But when you're looking at a drawing, you're looking at all of it at once. And so 
you have to like that's one of the the tricks you're doing as an artist is taking all of these disparate pieces that you normally are your brain is processing one at a time and making it making it all make sense together yeah totally that's why it's so hard going back to sort of the beginning of this to practice by drawing full pieces yeah there's just too much to keep track of mm -hmm. and it makes it that much harder to uh to improve at any one thing so like right here i'm just trying to sort of emulate the shape of schmidt's eyes uh from the other angle i'm reversing it in my head yeah looks uh, good or or you know giving giving it a shot to say the least uh yeah normally when i'm doing this i go s a little slower because it's not a it's not the same kind of rush process mm -hmm. you kind of want to really take your time and analyze what's going on yeah but yeah so that's a good way to uh to practice if you want to practice and improve on your style find elements of style that you think are really cool and then bring them in to your digital art program of choice and be like how does this work like why does this make sense yep what sort of rules are, are is this person following to make this work uh and again it's it's the same it's the exact same thing I've been saying the whole time. You're you're finding reference, you're engaging with that reference to learn something new, and then you're trying to implement it from your own imagination. Really lock it in there. Yeah. And it's it just seems like a simple thing to say, but then like as I was planning this lesson and going through like all the things I wanted to sort of touch on, it was like it really does apply to every aspect of learning. Yeah. How to draw. It just works really nicely. Uh, okay, let's see. I would do Julia's style, but I think Julia's style is going to be is going to be difficult because Julia does a lot of scenes and like distant figures, things that aren't. You really do like replicable. you could do one of her like warm up faces. Oh yeah, that's true. That's a good idea. Let's go find. Go find one of Julia's. Julia's style is like hyper realistic, but like cool. Yeah, it's cool. It's just cool. We can take the uh, the one she just did recently of the the Instagram guy. <laughs> yeah, do Julia's um, anime. Uh, self-insert drawing yeah i'll just do that real quick just learn just learn blender real quick bust that one out now i'll, I'll just do a, a really quick draw over of this to show illustrate the same thing as to things i might look at like i'm immediately drawn to the nose shape yeah them angles like the angles on this for like the bridge and then how it goes down this way it kind of comes around like this. Because you want to try to break these things down to understand how they work. And also, Julia always does the eyes from the side, like very, very angular. It's sort of like you're measuring an angle in math class. Like this That's is, an acute this angle. Is 30 degrees. Yep. Uh, I'm talking about like analyzing your stylistic <laughs> elements. Kitty. Hello, Olive. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, and we can do the same thing here with like the having the skull, which can just be whatever sort of loose circle. I usually like to do a line from there to the chin, follow the jaw around, and then get the ear in here and then we can sort of see how Julia's lines go My lines. tip of the ear meets the eyebrow like I said in normal people or in real people that's normally how it goes and the bottom of the ear would normally go to the bottom of the nose but this guy's got gauges so his go so a little lower a, goes a little lower yeah 
Then we got a chin here, and we got a hairline here, and you can see they're all pretty even. Yeah. Oh, them proportions. <laughs> this is also those a good way of measuring. Those some tasty proportions. Measuring proportions um, of a person from a photo is a good way too to if you're doing caricature you can find what ratio is like larger or smaller than the others and then exaggerate that to really make a person look like a person if you're cartooning yeah. them. Because you want to find the features that make them differentiated. Yeah, I mean, this is this one's uh, because it's so close to like the real person. What? There's more to analyze here in terms of like brushwork. Which... Uh, I'm not good at doing that. But it is cool to look at up close. Like this is one big brush stroke. This is one big brush stroke. Yeah. Cool to see how nasty you can get and have it <laughs> have it look good. Yeah. It's that nasty good. Yeah, the, the closer to a naturalistic portrait it is, the less stylistic elements there are to analyze. But I think with Julia's, the things I always take note of are the, the angles, the hard angles. Yeah. Everything is kind of turned into these harder angles than exist on the person normally. And that's what gives it that cool, like, noir-esque. Chiseled. Chiseled feel. Yeah. Like, if you, if you measure out all the angles. I did that on the drawing itself accidentally, so we're done with this one. <laughs> Oops. Because I got my, got my layers wrong. So that one's this one's done. That's gonna happen sometimes. Yeah, even the neck you, too. You've done you're you're on layer twenty one. That's you know, you made it twenty twenty layers before you did that. So that's true. That's pretty so, good. Pretty good. Uh okay. What did I want to talk about next? Covering a lot of ground in this lesson. Yeah. Um, I hope it's not like too much information. My goal was to like provide a very simple premise and then show how it applies to a lot of different things rather than to like that. actually teach a lot of different things, which is not what I'm trying to do. Yeah, I think I think it's good. So I hope that's coming through and it's not like Jacob's trying to teach everything at the same time, which is not no. what I want to do. I want to show how you can given, learn anything. Giving them the tools to, to do to teach themselves whatever they want. Here's uh, a question. I see. Read it, read it for me, Nathan. Uh, how do you decide which lines are important and what to focus on, especially when you're using a reference from life, then simplifying it? How do you find the balance? Uh, that's a really good question. And it's, it's tough to answer also. <laughs> uh, let me see if I can find like a a face to sort of demonstrate with who's got a distinctive face uh we could go back to henry cavill from from draw class one what about mr bean mr bean is great excellent face rowan atkinson rowan atkinson because if is we... he in, has he been knighted is he sir rowan atkinson he is he should be in my heart he's a knight of my soul you have to be part of the Royal Shakespeare Company, I think. Oh, That's how Royal you become Sir, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, so if I'm trying to make a cartoon version of a person, it's much easier the more distinct a person's face is. And it's even easier if they have distinguishing features. Yeah. So if I looked at a person like Mr. B, in which I'm using because he's an easy example... Um, you want to take stock of how, like I said, how the ratios of everything on the face sits compared to the like standard ratio, uh, of a head. So if I'm looking at, at Mr. Bean and we're like breaking down, Jacob, I have good news. What's that? Uh, wait. No, never mind. You don't have good news. Deceit. What does CBE stand for? Cool boy energy. Rowan Atkinson got that cool boy energy. Uh, 
commander of the Order of the British Empire. What? So Rowan Atkinson has received, has been made a CBE for services to drama and charity. So I don't know if that means he's a sir. He's a sir in the sense that if I saw him, I would be like, Rowan Atkinson, sir. Sir, it's sir. lovely to meet you. Um, so anyways, we got Rowan cool Atkinson's Cool bean face, energy. And the first thing I would notice if I were looking to draw a caricature of someone or a cartoonized version is the general head shape. And then you exaggerate that. So Rowan Atkinson's got kind of this... Um, an excellent head shape. The chin is very flat from the jaw to the chin. And then it kind of goes up like this. And then it's pretty. That's the Drawfy mug. It, his, his head is essentially the Drawfy mug. <laughs> so I would, I would give him like a very wide and like flat. It's about as wide as it is tall head with a very flat chin. And then it's like, okay, the ears are pretty big they make up a large portion of that space so i would want to do you know big ears like these kind of shape elements are what's going to get the the person looking like themselves uh jamie if you like the idea of mr bean with a sword might i recommend the show black adder it's basically mr bean with a sword mr bean with a sword I don't know if anyone can hear, but my uh, my neighbors are watching The Office. Of course they are. I always know when they're watching The Office because that theme song. That it, theme song. It really blasts. Sorry, you were in the middle of doing teaching and I started doing goofs. Yes. Because I'm a goof idiot. That's fine. Continue teaching. Uh, so I'd probably look at like the shape of the nose in general. Try to get that. Look at the ratio of the eyes. Mr. Bean's eyes are kind of far apart. So you'd want to make sure that, you know, if you draw in the eye. Uh, and this, I'm going to tell you right now, this is not a good drawing that I'm doing. It's because I'm trying to go really fast and also teach at the same time. It looks pretty good to me. But it's it's just to get the the sort of gist, you know? Yeah. So if we had like a shock sort of expression... You want to make sure that you got those eyes a little drifted apart. Uh, it's basically just exaggerating the things that are the most noticeable. Like these big, sh these big eyebrow shapes are really important and kind of how they do. And then the sort of big, big beanly grin and again i'm looking at the ratio here like here's the chin here's the tip of the nose the mouth is a little bit higher towards the nose more towards the nose than at the chin so it would hit like here yeah then you kind of want to get the big grin in there and these lines are are pretty important so again this is not like an ideal drawing but I want to bring the lid up here so he's kind of making a big, big face. An ideal drawing by Oscar Wilde. You know, it's not an ideal drawing, but it is a drawing. You can't tell me it's not that. Uh, then you kind of just want to look at what you've done. <laughs> <laughs> look at what you've done. And say, like, what, like, what parts of this are not looking like Mr. Bean, right? <laughs> We're I, I ask myself that after every drawing I make, it's like, regardless what? of the subject matter. What parts of this are not looking like the Mr. Just Bean that I look know back love? up at my Mr. Bean vision board? I have <laughs> so it's not, it's just not right. It's not quite right. Rowan, Rowan, guide me, sir, please. It's like maybe the eyes need to be bigger on the outside. Oh, you know what? His his eyes themselves are kind of drifted apart a little bit. It's going to make him really look crazy. <laughs> Rowan, please. <laughs> Rowan, you're scaring the children. Um, anyways, 
it's it's again it's something you can practice the same way right yeah um this is practice this isn't this isn't drawing so no one would if this wasn't a stream no one would see this no this would, would be, a, be a secret bean a, a secret bean just for mean <laughs> uh, i kind of like making that flat under there he kind of looks like someone else i'm trying to figure out who it is um oh yeah it, it looks kind of like um the um the guy from jurassic park the main guy yeah or the the which guy the main guy it looks like if jeff no the main the uh dr grant yeah what's that actor's it name it's not jeff oh god jurassic park actor Sam Neil. Sam Neil. It looks kind of like Sam Neil. Not Jeff. Definitely not a Jeff. You know, this kind of does look like Mr. Bean a little bit, though. Yeah, when you darken the eyebrows. Yeah, like... It's not not Mr. Bean. I think, honestly, if you accentuate the lips a little more, because he does have... He's got, like, the very pronounced lips... Right now, his his it also kind of looks a little bit like like Ray Fiennes. Yeah, it looks like a lot of people. Is I mean, he's very British looking, but he's like silly just, British. What if we just give him like big ol'? No, oh, that's yeah. not right. What that's now just, it's a di now it's a different man. What if we just give him some of that? I don't know who that is, but his his lips go like right across. Yeah, this looks kind of like a puppet. <laughs> yeah i mean that's that's sort of the magic of mr bean anyways i hope that like, was helpful so, like somehow his face looks more cartoony than the drawing you did yeah that's definitely true his face is more elastic than you drew it there would definitely because... be more he's got a bigger forehead i'm seeing actually now yeah that ratio i have wrong this is the importance it's... of these ratios like look at the brow to the forehead here yeah and then mine is here to here it's much it's smaller wrong. It's yeah, wrong. So so you can you can take that and learn. If we bring the forehead up a bit. Yeah, this is um this is the cover of a goosebumps. This is the cover of a goosebumps. Well I still have these lines on here, which yeah. are helping <laughs> my cause at the moment. This is Mad Magazine. If we get like like some of the wrinkles in. God, that's scary. This this isn't this isn't right. This isn't right to do to Sir Sir Mr. Bean. It's it's okay. I think like that's that's the point, is that this is practice. This is practice. It doesn't matter if I do this to Sir it's Mr. It's not bean. gonna be a perfect bean. This is a secret bean. You're all in on the secret. Yeah, I mean I did say that. Yeah. I said this wasn't gonna be a perfect bean. But now I'm stuck. I'm stuck in Beantown. I'm stuck in freaking Chicago. Bean City. This is a disaster. Sort of a Pee Wee Herman. Turns out Mr. Bean's harder to represent than I would have anticipated. But this, yeah. is, this is a thing you learn, you, right? You, you chose too distinctive of a, of a celeb. Like maybe you would go in and like somebody comes in and, and is really aggressive and they're like, you better draw me a likeness of a celebrity right now. Yeah. Or else I'm going to hit you. You got to, you got to pick, you got to be wiser with your pick. And you're like, okay, well, Mr. Bean's pretty distinctive. Maybe I should go with Mr. Bean, but then you try and you end up with the puppet from Goosebumps and then you get hit. <laughs> that's, that's all part of it. That's all part of the, the learning process. It's all part of the learning process. Um, in any case, in any case, you don't need to, you don't need to linger on it because it's practice. It's practice. I've already lingered too long. This is the yeah. danger sometimes. Well, this, this is an example of what you shouldn't do. Yeah, don't get too linger. invested. If you get stuck on Mr. Bean, that's part of the process, but just know 
You got to pull yourself out. <laughs> you got to pull yourself out. Mr. Bean will try to trap you. You can't you can't stay in the, in the bean drawing too long. It's like inception. You cannot. You got to Time get out moves of there. differently when you're in the bean. Um <laughs> time moves differently when you're in the bean. <laughs> you lose track of who you are. Something. And all you know is the bean. You need to bring a totem with you when you um attempt to enter the bean when you attempt to enter the bean you can only bring one though yeah so be careful when you use it mm -hmm. um so right now i was thinking my my totem is my nintendo switch you have to give your nintendo switch to mr bean yeah he won't let you leave unless you have to give something up you have to delete one of your save files mr bean is an enemy <laughs> of the arts <laughs> uh, I'm just drawing this real quick because for it has to do with the next thing I want to talk about. Okay. It's also just a good palate cleanser from Mr. Bean. Yeah, I want to stop thinking about the bean. <laughs> just draw a nice little friend here. Because uh, I was thinking that maybe next I could talk about a good way to practice on some color and lighting. How about that? Nathan, are you there? Yeah, sorry, I was reading chat. Oh, okay. Sometimes you sit really still. Sorry. And I get worried. Sorry. Um, and I don't know if you think it's okay that we practice some color and lighting or not. <laughs> I think it's very okay. You think that's all right? I think that's I think that's great. I okay. think that's a perfect way to spend the final ten minutes of the. Uh, I mean, we can go overtime as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm probably not going to go like major overtime. I just figure while we have some time, I'll because I had a whole like list of things to do, and we haven't made it through all of it. But I I overstuffed it on purpose so we'd have plenty of time. Hmm. Delicious um, stuffed class. A stuffed crust class. Oh, people are already sharing some of their uh, their gesture drawings. That's oh, nice. great. If there's one thing yeah. I want people to take away from this, it's gesture drawing. Go, yeah. Just do a lot of gesture drawing and you'll get so just much better. Do, just do it. But also sometimes you'll need to practice this other stuff too. Yeah. Um, depending on what you're sort of into. Um, but a good thing you can do is make a simple drawing like this. We're just going to make a little friend. What a friend. And if you set out just to work on like, say like lighting specifically, mm -hmm. A good thing to do to get a lot of repetitions in fast, which is, as you know, the the gist of what you should be doing here. Uh, do a simple doing drawing, the reps, and then we're gonna, just going to take this like guy. Are and, you going to light him from a bunch of different angles? Yeah, we're just going to put him in a bunch of different lighting scenarios and like try our best to sort of get the vibe we want. And then if you get stuck on something, you look up reference and see like, oh, what does like a dude in a cave look like, <laughs> lighting wise. Or you can like find some cool lighting examples online and try to imitate them. I am enjoying Jamie's uh, chronicling of their their journey into Manhattan while this is all happening. Jamie's going into Manhattan now. Uh, now they've they've been doing it now of all uh, they, times. They've they've been they've been on a journey, but they've they've managed to to stay active in the chat the That's whole time. really impressive. That's a skill. I, I think it's great. I think it's great. Just uh, doing some, some fill-ins here. Some quick fill-ins. We'll probably duplicate the lines to make them a little darker. Yep. Maybe we just get them, put them in a red shirt. Put this guy in a red shirt. Duplicate the lines. 
that's uh that's a little uh how i would make the thumbnails for uh drawfee beans is i would take whatever drawing was going to be in the thumbnail and just duplicate it a bunch of times until it looked like the lines were dark enough it's a good way to do it that's how i did it nathan nathan revealed yep uh let's let's just merge this and then we can no nope, not like that did they change the shortcuts i don't know what you're on a, you're on a pc happening you're on a pc so i don't even know what the shortcuts are photoshop also updated recently oh so yeah like 2021 and there's definitely some stuff there's definitely some stuff going on you can't see what i'm doing here i'm just coloring in the eyeballs you just have to trust me. I trust you, Jacob. Thank you. I thought that there used to be, you could alt click to, here we go. We got it. We're there. Nice. They're multiplying. They're, they're growing. I got friends. Okay. They're so multiplying. You can even do this like, if you've drawn like a gesture or something you like, make it into like a little, a full drawing real quick. And then just then set it, set it up like this. So you got flats on and then you can just light this bad boy. Yeah. So then we can just be like, okay, what if, uh, this first guy is in a, is in a dark blue sort of cavey, like the cave of wonders in Aladdin. Mm. And so we just want to like, Toss a multiply this, layer on him. This friend is a, a diamond in the rough. What is that? What do you mean? That's a reference to the Cave of Wonders. What are you Aladdin. saying? Diamond in, diamond in the rough. What are you saying right now? You need to be a diamond in the rough in order to enter the Cave of Wonders or else it eats you. I don't understand what you're talking about. If you, um, if you try and get... Because the Cave of Wonders is a big uh, tiger face. And if you go, if you try and go in there and you aren't a diamond in the rough, the cave gets very angry. And even though it is just made of sand, it, uh, it, it, it eats you. It eats you up. Interesting. Fascinating. The eyes are, the eyes are scarabs. Um, the eyes are scarabs. So we got this guy in a dark cave. But what if he's also uh, like holding a torch? It's like if he's holding a torch down here, then there'd be like, you can think about like, okay, where would the light be? And you want to like do this fast. So you're not like using all of your time being meticulous about this. Mm -hmm. And it's like, we can make a layer where we kind of get this orange, like torchy light and show like, oh, that's what that would look like. Now I'm thinking about torches. And then you might think, I want some tacos. What if uh, he's got a torch in this hand, but the the moonlight is like coming in from the cave oh, entrance? Oh, we got behind. some multiple. We got like a warm light, and then we've got a cool. And then we've got like a cool light coming cool in, sort from, of a, like a rim light from behind. And this is just like you want to, like I said, be easy and fast with this, so you're not spending like a ton of time on any one thing you're just kind of experimenting with color combinations yeah and being like what would it what would it look like what and so yeah. now in doing this just this little bit it's like okay so if i were doing this in a real drawing i would know that something like this would work pretty well uh like looks wise yeah look how three-dimensional our friend got with just a few little splotches. Yeah, and it's easy. And then you can take, let's go to the second guy, see what's going on with him. Where, where's yeah. the second guy? Where is the second guy? Uh, he he's, uh, he's at the beach. He's at the beach. He's at the beach on a nice sunny day. On a nice sunny day. Yeah. So there's definitely going to be like some, some blue. There's going to be a lot of bright blue. Whoops. Got to make that a different layer.
Ooh, excuse me. Because the sky is blue and the ocean is blue. And that's going to be bouncing all around. Oh, yeah. You're going to get some, some reflected light. You're going to get some sunlight and some reflected light. So we can sort of desaturate and brighten him up quite yeah. a bit. Uh, and then there's gonna be there's gonna be shadows, depending on the angle of the sun. Probably some pretty harsh shadows. I would guess. Mm hmm. So like maybe the sun is like straight overhead. So we can very quickly. I'm just making layers like crazy over here, but it doesn't matter because it's practice. This is practice, and we want this to be pretty. Pretty dark, pretty harsh. So it's like if it's from straight overhead, then it would hit the top of the nose. Now it looks like a puppy. Maybe maybe he's a puppy. <laughs> Do you ever think about that, Nathan? Yeah, that's why. Did you ever think I, about that? I thought I thought about it when you drew it like that. It's like it's gonna hit. The that's hair. that's when I that's when I thought about it. The hair is gonna cast a shadow on the head. Mm -hmm, the sort mm -hmm. of brow ridge here is going to cast a shadow. Yeah. So you'll probably get most of this stuff it's in so shadow. It's so bright out. You're it's really getting bright. that contrast. Yeah. And so you can experiment with this to kind of just get a feel for what should be in light, what should be in shadow. And again, pull up reference whenever you don't know. Yeah. Of this different, these different like lighting situations. And I'm going fast here because we don't have a lot of time, but also just because you should go fast. Because you're going to be like zooming way out on it. It's not like, yeah, this ain't detailed. It's, the head is going to cast a big shadow down here. Shoulders are going to be lit up, but it's going to be like shadowed down here. This does not look like a sunny beach day right now. This looks like a horror movie. Yeah, um, but, but that's okay. Th that's like part of the process, right? Like I'm experimenting. Sometimes... Your, your initial thought isn't necessarily going to read as what you thought it would, but now you're like, okay, well now this, I know this works for this, this other effect that I wasn't going for, but. Exactly. Cause see, now I'm thinking if it's a sunny beach day, even if there's extreme light from somewhere, it's going to be bouncing up off the sand. Yeah. So the not, shadows gonna aren't going to be as in, intense. Yeah. This looks like a dark room with one sort of bright light coming totally. down. So let's like, let's play into that. Let's do that. That's what this is now. That's what this is now. Let's get like a hard light. Maybe it's like you're one of those in control. Very yellow sort of lights. That's I think something to keep in mind while you're doing these practices is you're you're still in control. Even if the drawing gets away from your initial intent, you're still in control. You can decide how much time you want to spend on it and what you know what you're trying to do with it. Yeah, so totally. You don't need to be you don't need to be afraid of it. Cuz like I just showed you, like I totally messed up. Like I didn't get the result I was going for at all. But that's like the point of the practice. You want to see where you're lacking in that knowledge base so you know what you need to look at specifically so you know what to improve. Yeah. So now it's like there's a light from above. This is this is he just did a, a it's bank robbery. It's hazy. He did a bank robbery and there's like, it's like a foggy night and there's some searchlights going and they just, they just shined a flashlight on him. <laughs> they just shined a, a, a helicopter light from above has been cast over him. Like, he turns oh, and, you got, you got me. <laughs> he turns and grins at you. And it's like, looks like I've been caught this time, but will I stay caught? But then it's like, okay, let's, we can mess around with the, the third guy. Maybe we needed like some of this soft yellow light kind of kind of all over. Oh yeah. To kind of like brighten up the situation. And I think we yeah. could even push it a little less saturated. Yeah. Cuz when it's really bright it kind of desaturates the colors. Mhm. Mm and then maybe the shadows should have been like a lot less intense. Intense. So maybe we try to just make the shadows like a, a multiply, like a gray color multiply. Yeah. And it's like, I don't know if this is going to work. We're going to try it. But we're, we're going to see just, where we uh, end up. We're just trying for, for funsies here. 
It's like maybe the light's hitting from like the top over here. Mm -hmm. And so we could get some like light shadows. Oh yeah. On the situation. So it's not as aggressive. There no. would still be shadows cast though. For sure. The ear here is probably going to be in shadow always. And it's kind of a brighter scene. And you don't even need like a lot of shadows at all for it. Yeah. And then maybe we could still get in some of the, the like blue bounce light from like the water. Yeah. See if we can't put some of that in. And I'm just using like the general brushes too. I'm not even like Yeah. This is this is this is practice. This is not like none of these are are things you're you're posting after you do it. You're just like trying to see like, okay, what colors work for for these effects so that when you do your your pieces that you want to post, that you want to share, you have you have some some stuff in your head already about what works for different effects. Yeah, exactly. And you can just kind of try stuff out. Uh, it's fun. It's fun to do. I think, is the stream over? I bet it is. It's after five. So yes, the stream should be over. But I'll do a quick like recap real quick for anyone that came in late. Yeah. The basic gist of this was, if you're sitting down to draw, you don't know what to draw. There's a million things you can practice, and the best way to practice is to find reference as quickly as you can, um, sort of iterate on that reference, draw from that reference, and then use that information, draw from your imagination. And let's make all this go away. And if there's one takeaway I could have everybody do, it's, it's the gesture drawing stuff. Yeah. I oh, think if you, heck, man. if you sit down and you don't know what to do, Pull up a gesture drawing website. Do as many gestures as you can. 30 Just seconds. Just seeing that gesture, I remembered exactly what pose it was, <laughs> and it was that horrible face. It was the horrible latex face. Yeah. Uh, and I hope this helps somebody to next time they're like, I'm, I don't have the motivation, or I don't know what to do, or I don't know how to get better. Um, you can think back to this class and, and remember that there's a million things you can do and they most of them don't even require you to come up with anything. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of just straight up work you can do that will make you so much better. And uh, I hope everybody gets way better at drawing. I hope everyone becomes the artists of their dreams. Yeah. And Nathan, we'll, we'll hang out and do gesture drawing again sometime. I would love to. That's, that'd be fun. That was, that was so much fun. Uh, that's it. Thanks, everyone. For watching yeah we'll be back with another drawfee stream on monday and me and julia will be streaming on sunday on secret sleepover society and nathan are you you streaming anytime uh i do wednesdays uh, that's not coming soon no that's so many days away it's like a whole half week from now it's practically impossible to think that far ahead or it already happened if you're watching the VOD. Damn. Yeah. It makes you think. You always have to address both time situations. Uh, that's it. That's it. Thanks, everyone. Jacob, I learned so much. Thank you for doing this. Nathan, I'm glad. Thank you for joining me. It's good to always. have you company. I love to be company. And we will see you all next time. We're sorry. Sorry. Sorry.